All right, today we're gonna be talking about position sizing matters more than you know. And we're gonna get a lot into trade journals and trade tracking in this video. So be sure to like, subscribe, and ring that bell to be notified as soon as we drop a new video. We talk about risk management, we talk about live trading, we talk about recapping trades, you know, we do multi-part historical videos. Got a bunch of amazing stuff on the channel. Subscribe and ring that bell to be notified as soon as we drop. So Listen, a lot of this is gonna be about a trade journal. One thing I want you to do is also check out Stocks to Trade Live. So Stocks to Trade Live, four times a day, every single day, and then even on weekends. We usually do one session on Saturday and one session on Sunday. And the reason I want you to know that is click that link, 100% free, 100% live, and especially on that Saturday workshop. So I call it the Saturday Weekend Warrior Workshop. All of the webinars are great. Join the time that works for you. Different, you know, I'm on them, Matt Monaco's on them, Rob Booker's on them, different presenters, different approaches. But particularly on that Saturday one, we get very in-depth in what I'm gonna talk about right now, and that's that trade journal. So every day or, or every week on that Weekend Warrior Workshop, I give out a copy of the trade journal. It breaks all these things down. It's nicely formatted PDF. It's actually set up, uh, basically you've got three trades per page. I print it double-sided for me. And then three ring binder, very friendly. So you can punch those three ring binder, track all this data. And then I am kind of an old school tactile dork. Okay, but then I put the tabs, you know, your tab markers in your three ring binder. And I divide by day, month, or day, week, month, and then year. Typically one binder is about a quarter. There's about, so not a full year, I guess, but you know, about three months per binder. And then what I can do is go back and review all this data, see what's working and what isn't. So what do we wanna track? We wanna track position size, okay? That's the name of this video. The biggest reason we wanna track position size is especially as a new trader, a big mistake. And let me know in the comments if you've made this mistake. Uh, too big a size and you get too emotionally attached. And what happens when you have too big a size, you see any green, okay, you're up 50 bucks and you just take that profit because you know you got too big a size. Then vice versa, and this is what being sized too big creates, that trade goes against you. Now it's a losing trade, now you got too big a size, you're emotionally attached, and you won't stop out where you said you would. So say you buy in some $2 high at A break, you said you were gonna risk VWAP at a buck 75, you got 3,000 shares instead of 1,000 shares, it falls back through a buck 75, you get emotional and you don't take the stop. That's where position sizing can bite against you. Biggest thing to do is keep that consistent position side as add to winners and then cut your losers. Now, it's tough under the PDT, I get that. People are like, oh, you know, I don't like that. But I mean, if you take that same trade with 500 shares on the two break, add 500 at 210, add another 500 at 225, you, get the, you catch the meat of the move, but you're averaging into a winner and then never average to a loser, okay? Because what you do, averaging to a loser, it's breaking your risk management, it's breaking your discipline, and it's just magnifying your losses. Where if you take that 500 share, it drops to 175 hits VWAP, you move on, what is that? 500 shares, 75 bucks or whatever, 100 bucks, okay? So small loss, small but acceptable loss, and you can move on from that. Um, next thing I want you to track is obviously your entry where you entered the stock, and then I want you to write down before you enter the trade what your goal is as well as your stop loss, okay? And then as you follow through with that journal, I want you to write down where you actually exited, okay? Did you take profits where you said you would? Or did you overstay, give back profits? Did you stop out where you said you would? Did you take profits before the stock even hit your move? I mean, I know it sounds crazy, but a lot of people will take these plays, it's gradually uptrending, they get panicky, they get worried, they take small profits, and then the trade plan works out, okay? Happens a lot more than you think and can be very frustrating. So it forces you to stick to that plan. Next thing you know is obviously the date, okay? We wanna track the date so we can go back and look at historical data. That way we can match up our entry to the chart and see what the stock did the next day, the previous day, weeks after, et cetera. Um, symbol, obviously you're gonna write the ticker price. And then we're gonna break down that execution. And that execution is 
the entry? Did you stick to your entry? Did you chase? Okay, did you get busy at work, take a phone call, said you were gonna buy at 225, you come back to your desk, stock's at 275, you still buy, then you get bagged when it pulls back and you're like, oh, I broke that rule, okay? So did you stick to the original plan, yes or no? Um, and then the best way what you can do is every single day and every week and every month, what you're gonna do is you're gonna take all this data you're gonna, oh, you're gonna name your setups, by the way. That is one thing I forgot. I want you to name your setups, okay? Is it a dip and rip? Is it a VWAP hold? Is it a first green candle? Is it a VWAP bounce, okay? Name your setups and track your setups. And then each day, we're gonna review that journal and we're gonna isolate things that did and didn't work, okay? And I, so many people make this mistake. So many people say they'll do it mentally. You can't, you literally cannot do it mentally, you will forget things. Please write this stuff down, please track it. What you're trying to do is isolate small differences, okay? I, I use a lot of sports analogies with trading. I think there's so many things that are similar, okay? And it's just like, you know, that, that hitting a base hit versus a grounder to the pitcher, I mean, it's just minuscule things, okay? making free throws, making, you know, completing the pass on the football. You're just making minor tweaks that can make significant difference. And if you're not tracking that data and then reviewing it, I know a lot of people that take the first step, they write the stuff down, they journal, but then they don't go back and review it. And I know it's boring and I know it sounds dry, but do you want to be successful or do you want to be in the 90% that fail, okay? One of the biggest reasons 90% fail at trading is they're not going the extra mile. They're not watching film at night like, you know, like a professional quarterback does. They're not hitting the weight room early. They're not dialing in their nutrition. You know, there's a lot of first round draft pick quarterbacks that wash out and never succeed. People look at him and they're like, oh, this guy was an amazing physical specimen. What happened? You know what he was doing at night? He was probably down at the strip club, okay? He's probably sleeping in, he's probably worried about the cars he's buying, he's worrying about all this stuff, and next thing you know, he washes out and you never hear from him again. But then you got another quarterback that's been around for 20 years. You know why, and, and when he was drafted, Tom Brady, great example. Everybody's like, this guy's nothing. But what's he doing 20 plus years later? You know, doing that work outside of just the buying and the selling, okay? The money is made outside the buying and selling. It's really in the preparation, the review, and finding small, but little things that you can tweak and improve. Listen, a lot of people think one, a lot of people will think one setup is their core setup. They do all this work, they find out it's working worse than another setup. And I know, you might be like, whatever, I would know. It's so hard, especially for those of you that are part-time, okay? I got the time to kind of sit there midday and think about what happened, kind of go over it. But if you're trading in a flurry in the morning, then you're at the day job during the day, and then you gotta rush home at night, you're gonna miss a lot of stuff and, and you don't need to. Track that data, review that data, and take advantage of it, okay? Join me on Stocks Trade Live. Me, Rob Booker, Matt Monaco, live four times a day. We go over this type of stuff. We go over the plays of the day. We go over the setups. We break down the Stocks Trade software. We do it all, even on weekends. Check out Stocks to Trade Live.